Ah, technician here with a little bit of uh, background on why this marshmallow cannon exists. It's designed to launch marshmallows at high speed. I was originally involved in a t-shirt launcher competition put on by Intel and the Portland Trailblazers and the team that I was working with was into competition marshmallow launching so I thought it might be fun to scale down the t-shirt cannon, use some of the learnings that we had from designing that t-shirt cannon, apply it in a much smaller version and see if we can get some marshmallow supersonic. This is the result of that task. This tank is steel. It's an old propane camping lantern bottle. Um, we brazed a one inch pipe nipple through it, threaded on both ends. This is all one piece of pipe. It's not two pieces of pipe. The pipe has some ports cut into the side of it, which is difficult to see on this video, so the easiest way to describe how it works is to come up with a clear tank. The easiest way to do that is with a drawing. So, let's pull out the guts and see what's actually in this thing. It comes apart very simply. We don't need this anymore. We'll set that aside. And we'll lay everything here on our little diagram that shows how it works. This is the basic layout that this lays out in, in the cannon. After it's fired, this piston, it's free to move on the shaft. That's part of it we'll explain. Uh, in operation, let me move this up just a tiny bit. There we go. That will uncover the port and let the air out. We'll get into what makes this different than a lot of the traditional uh, air cannons and stuff that you see on the internet. To close the valve, it's real simple. Push the knob in and this pin behind the piston, which you can see here, is used to simply push the piston into the closed position. With it in the closed position and both these O-rings the same size, the pipe being the same diameter all the way through, we now can pressurize the tank and the pressure applied onto the sides of the piston move it neither forward nor backwards. We load a marshmallow, it goes into the barrel, sits right about there. It's only about an inch from a piston, so we don't have the long path flow that you normally would have in a sprinkler valve or some of the other valves that's on there. However, it's almost as short as what you would get on a uh, quarter turn ball valve, with one exception. There's no uh, restriction going into the valve. There's no inlet other than just some big ports cut into the side of the pipe, so we don't have that restriction between our air tank and the valve itself. To fire this, this is pulled back. You may notice the end of the rod just disappeared. It goes down inside of the piston so that it has longer travel. Part of the reason for that is this reset pin that was used to close the valve goes through the stopper and disappears down here into the stop assembly so that the piston, when it comes flying back, can't hit the pin and break it, which was a problem, which is why I have an extra hole in the shaft here from where I had the pin too far forward and, well, the piston was hitting it because it was opening faster than I could yank the rod out of the way. So I had to have the rod retract fully into this stop assembly before it starts to open the piston. What happens next is this piston gets pulled back, air starts to go in between the piston and the marshmallow. Uh, this was designed with not knowing how fast the valve would be, but we did want to know that the valve could get fully open before the marshmallow moved very far. This piston weighs about the same as two marshmallows. So if the marshmallow, when air goes in here, moves a couple of inches, in that same time, whatever that is, this piston can slam all the way open because the air pressure on there slams that piston back. Notice that the operator is not opening the valve. They just trigger it. Once this valve slams open, a very short air path allows the high pressure air tank to discharge into the barrel, launching our marshmallow at very high speed. In the t-shirt cannon, this is the piston out of it. This shows the recess in the front of the piston for the trigger. It works exactly the same. I don't have the o-rings on it. This was turned on a drill press. It's not real pretty because things tended to want to jump around and grab, but the side of the piston, who cares whether it's a little goobered up or not. 
what was important was cutting the grooves so that I could get good seals on the o-rings that's all that matters the fact that this is all scuffed up on the side made no difference in how it operates and with that piston and a load about that far away when this piston comes back this piston floats by the way um, so does the apple they're about the same weight so when this one opens this comes back almost an inch and a half two inches thereabouts and the apple in the barrel would have only have traveled about the same distance from then the piston stops because it hits the stop in the back and all of that tank pressure is goodness on that apple getting it up to speed we've clocked apples in excess of 800 feet per second launched out of that t-shirt launcher now the math on this for getting that valve open is simple the area of the front of that piston is related to its diameter the diameter of a one inch piston is one inch the formula for area is pi times the radius squared anybody that takes geometry would know that so the radius is a half of the diameter so half of one is a half that squared is a quarter so a quarter times pi pi is 3.14 roughly so figure uh, when you figure the area on that that's about 0.78 square inches of area if we pressurize the tank to 100 psi that's almost 80 pounds of pressure that that tank kicks on that piston to get it out of the way. That is what makes that valve fast. When you double the diameter of a piston, because it's double this way and double this way, the area actually goes up fourfold. So if I went from a one inch piston to a two inch piston like this one, it actually has four times the area. And your tank for that, you will want to be a little bit larger. So, with that in mind, this is the size of our competition t-shirt cannon that we used in our competition. We won the overall competition. Yay! And that concludes how our marshmallow cannon works.